the smell of a new session. That's what that smell is. More specifically, a continuation of the brilliant pre-algebra course. The one in which I thought was gonna be easy and completely useless, but it turns out I didn't even know basic order of operations right. <laughs> I didn't know. So we're gonna continue on with this and we're gonna probably learn some things like factorizations. Now, if you're new around here, you're probably thoroughly confused. Let's just uh, boot open lo-fi hip-hop beats to beat your me too. Rainy.gg slash playlist, link in description. And uh, just give you a quick little rundown of what's going on. Hi, my name's Ranty, as you can probably tell by uh, the little fucking thing down there. Sorry, that was rude. Let me start again. I'm trying to make a game practically from scratch in C and I pretty much just don't know math. <laughs> so I'm revisiting the basics on a brilliant website. <laughs> See what I did there. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> oh, kill me. <laughs> and yeah, that's 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 literally it. We're taking a pre-algebra course. <laughs> yeah, that's that's basically my life at the moment. Now, the reason that I'm trying to learn math, I'm trying to work my way up to learning linear algebra. And we need linear algebra because you just need linear algebra for some uh, quite quite a bit of game dev stuff. Matrices, vectors, all that kind of cool stuff. What we specifically need it for is physics. I'm doing a big old physics overhaul um, and trying to actually understand how my physics engine even operates. Because last time I kind of just followed a tutorial and just like nodded my head. I was like, yep, yep. I, I, I definitely understand this. F, F equals MA brother, pound it. And it works like shit, so. <laughs> All right, factorizations. You guys ready to learn some math? I know I sure am. We ended the last chapter by finding unknown values. For example, how do we find A and B if we know that A times B is equal to 12? In this circle puzzle, any two values whose product is 12 can make a possible solution. Other answers are possible. No, simply impossible. And this lesson we'll use circle puzzles like this one to think about what products make a number. We can also use rectangles to show them. <sighs> Boring. And how many different ways can 12 unit squares be arranged into a rectangle? All right, so we got three by four, two by six, one by 12. Am I missing something, boys? I don't think I am. Three. What's going on? What's going on here? Huh? A fucky wucky has been happened. To be honest, I think it might have something to do with Dark Reader. It's just a hunch. Flashbang. Ah, yeah, all right. So it turns out we can't have Dark Reader on because it just messes up the entire thing. So we're gonna continue to be flashbang for the rest of this video. If you would like to help support me for absolutely free, you can head on over to twitch.tv slash Randy. And if you have an Amazon Prime account, drop a Twitch Prime and you can actually get some cool ass rewards on my website through that. Go to randy.gg slash prime, link your Twitch account, and it'll uh, give you free membership. So that's pretty goddamn cool. If you don't have an Amazon Prime account, but would still like to support me, it's only five Aussie bucks a month. You can get all the rewards. List is up on screen. There's quite a bit of them at the moment and more coming in future. So thank you very much. Love you boys. Appreciate you. Yeah. <laughs> 10 is a product of two and five. Ah, okay. You see, I never knew that's what the product was. I don't know why I never knew that. I guess that's why we're taking this course. <laughs> no, one is not a prime number, one and itself. So it can't be itself and itself. What? I feel, <laughs> I feel so dumb going through this course. It feels, what's the word I'm looking for? Emasculating? It feels emasculating. I definitely didn't type out that definition before saying it out loud in order to get it correct. It really does. But at the same time, I don't give a fuck. I don't care. I would rather go through these basics and know them properly and iron out any of my dumb little kinks that were just randomly instilled in my mind in primary school than have them for the rest of my life flailing around not knowing anything. So, hey, who the fuck cares if I look goddamn stupid right now? What you need to is this prime. <laughs> That's a good question. None, because then even. What? Oh, two. I fucked up, guys. I jumped the gun. <laughs> Getting a little cocky. Getting a little cocky there. Which of the following numbers is not prime? 91. That looks familiar. I don't know why. Nine times nine? No, that's, that's, that's 81. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is 91? 91. I don't even know why I chose 91. I just looked at it and I went, can't be prime. Simply can't be. That's very strange. And I don't even have an answer. What is it divisible by? Seven by 13. You see, that's, I, I would never know that. Never. But apparently I do. I don't know. Lucky guess, I guess. All right, the ability to find factorization is important to an algebra. 
like I was saying, this is probably my biggest weakness because I just missed that day of class and just forever was stuck there. Something about distribution. I don't know. Polynomial expansion slash factorization. That's the word I was looking for. Exactly. That I suck balls at. My God. And it really came back to to bite me on the ass later on when we were doing stuff like maybe like quadratics and stuff. I just remember there was there was a bunch of problems that required you to use polynomial factorization, right? And I just didn't know how to do it. So I just took the longest way around the entire goddamn thing. And my teacher would just mark my work and just and just go, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Why didn't you just do this? I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, sure. Because I know how to do that. So I'm keen for some factorization. <clears throat> I'm never going to use this shit. You in high school. Yep, yep, yep. That was literally my exact attitude. Word for word, I would sit at the back of math class in grade 11 and 12 on my laptop saying, I don't need to listen to any of this. I ain't going to use this shit. As I am sitting there learning how to fucking program. Dumbest shit ever. I wish I could just go back and just backhand the con. Let's start by applying this thing <laughs> to a few circle puzzles that are a bit more challenging. Let's do some puzzles. Which of the following values could we end up filling into the circle that's highlighted? Four. Cool. Now it's increased the top value of the puzzle to 45. We continue to disallow the use of one anywhere in the puzzle. Which of the following is the largest possible value that we could end up filling into the circle that's highlighted? I reckon five. Yep, there we go. So time we'll think about what kind of numbers can fill in the empty circles. Uh, 15. I think it's true. Yeah. Which of the following factorizations is not a prime factorization? 42. This isn't one. What? I fucked up. I tell you what, this would be a good improvement for Brilliant if when you get something wrong, you can retake it and it gives you a different question or a different set just so you can test that you do actually know it again instead of moving on. That would be really good. Cause I would like to redo this problem just to prove I know it, but I can't really do that. So is it Y is a number whose prime factorization has exactly three different primes. A times B times C. What is the smallest possible value of Y? Aha. <laughs> that would be a little bit silly. Three different primes. One, two, three. That's what I'm thinking. Those are all primes. No, one isn't a prime. No, I'm not going to fall into that trap. Two, three, four, 24. Am I correct? Four is also not a prime. Should have double checked. I'm a failure. To be fair, you can't really regenerate this problem because it's textual. But for things like this, you could regenerate. If all the green circles in this puzzle must be filled with different prime values, what is the smallest value that we can fill into the top circle of the puzzle? Let's start thinking, all right? Uh, this is a prime time for Leonardo. Prime time for some sketching. All right, let's list out all of the factors of seven. What else? I'm sure there's some more. What's the best way of determining primes? You just kind of have to randomly try it or 210 walking it in if i'm incorrect in this i'm i'm ending stream <sighs> all right hot tip boys whoa hot tip alert coming in hot baby let's say you have a number let's just kind of start from scratch up here again 42 how on earth are we going to get all the prime factorizations quick fast at 42 you go 42 right and then we just break it down however we know how right so let's just say we go something like 21 and 2 all right so then we just break it down into its prime into its prime factorization 7 times 3 times 2 now in order to get all the primes get all the different types of factors from this bad boy right the different factorizations we would just selectively multiply them together so 7 times 3 21 times two, there's number one. Next up, seven times three by two, which is 12. What am I doing? Three times two is not 12. <laughs> seven by six, that's another one, easy peasy. We could also go seven and two, use the commutative property, right? Because it doesn't actually matter where this bad boy is. Three by 14, that's how you get all of the goddamn primes. Easy peasy, squeezy lemon. And you, it would be three, but I got it incorrect and had to look at the explanation for that. So hot tip. Now we know how to factorize, baby. Let's go. Y'all ever just roll out of bed in the morning and be like, today I'm gonna solve primary school math problems. 
If two rectangles have dimension in common, we can glue them together along the sides sharing that common dimension, and the resulting figure is also a rectangle. That is, if we have a rectangle that measures a times x and another that measures a times y, we can join them on the side that measures a to form rectangles with dimension, a times x plus y. Like right here, we have z. We can join these together, and now the length is four, I, I actually don't fucking know, but you times four by, or add four. Four plus eight x z times z equals the area of this new rectangle. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Six times four, six times 11 can be merged into a six times four plus 11. Six times four plus four. Oh, so this is what this means. This right here, this is the entire concept I failed to grasp when I was learning math in school, is that if you have these two and you have a shared six, you can just yoink them together and then times and then just add the other two together. That makes sense. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, just, ah, ah, oh, make it stop. Oh, fuck. Holy shit. Ow. Never mind. I'm sorry, miss. I, I, I didn't mean to pull up cool math games. I know we've got homework to do. I'll keep going. I'll, go, I'll keep going, I swear. Students typically memorize multiplication tables from 1 times 1 through 12 times 12. What if we need to calculate 6 times 13? This is so true. This is so true. Every single time I come across like 6 times 13 or 14, right? And it's like, yo, why don't you just memorize an extra 13, 14, 15, 16, which is what some freaks in school did. Some freaks, you can be like, yo, what's seven times 14? And they'll just do it because they fucking memorize it and they put in that extra mile because they're little bitches. What happens if we don't actually need to do that? If we don't have that specific product memorized, we can break it into the sum of easy multiplications by matching six by 13 as the area of rectangle with dimensions six and 13. Yes, so we could break it down into six and six and six and seven. To be fair, I don't even have six times seven memorized. I just don't. I know six times six is 36, and the way I would get six times seven is I would plus six onto 36, which is 42. Six times seven is 42, baby. That's the only way I know it. Big multiplication problem into pieces becomes more important when we work with larger numbers. Actually, to be fair, that's exactly what I just did. You know how I said I don't know what six times seven is? I would go six times six plus six. That's literally just the exact same thing that's happening here. I've been doing this all along, but I've never thought of it as breaking it up into more than that. I would I would just plus six on the end of everything. So six times 13, I, I would go six times 12 plus six, but you could go six times 10, which is 60. Six times three is 18, 78. That's so much quicker. All right, what? Actually going back to basics and learning fundamentals again? Actually OP as shit. My God, you think you know until you don't know. This is, this, this is genuinely really cool. I kind of need to go back to my times tables. <laughs> need to memorize my sevens, eights, and nines, and sixes even. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna print out my times tables and put it on the back of my toilet door. As a little ode to my dumbass fucking eight-year-old self who couldn't be asked memorizing half of the times tables. Mark my words. Next video you see, I will have my times tables memorized. Mark my words. <sighs> anyway, that's the end of this session or this video. Slow, long, dramatic fade out. Yeah. See you later, YouTube peeps. Bye-bye. Yay, they're gone. Oh, thank fuck. I hate those guys.